In 1842, Austrian physicist and mathematician Christian Johann Doppler observed that the frequency of sound waves received by an observer are dependent on the motion of the source of the sound or the motion of the observer in relation to the source of the sound. Think about how the sound of a car's horn changes pitch as it goes by. This phenomena is known as the Doppler effect. So what does this have to do with flow measurement? Well, the same principle is used in some ultrasonic flow meters. Here's how. A Doppler ultrasonic flow meter uses a transducer to admit an ultrasonic beam into the stream of fluid flowing through a pipe. In order for a Doppler flow meter to operate, there must be solid particles or air bubbles moving through the stream that will reflect the ultrasonic beam. The motion of particle shifts the frequency of the beam, which is received by a second transducer. The frequency shift is linearly proportional to the flow rate. But what if your application doesn't have any suspended particles or bubbles that can be used to get a Doppler reading? That's where a transit time ultrasonic flow meter comes into play. A transit time ultrasonic flow meter measures the difference in time from when an ultrasonic signal is transmitted from the first transducer until it crosses the pipe, bounces back, and is received by the second transducer. When flow is present, sound moves faster if traveling in the same direction as the flow and slower if moving against it. A comparison is made of upstream and downstream measurements. If there's no flow, the travel time will be the same in both directions. Since the ultrasonic signal must traverse the pipe to be received by the sensor, the liquid cannot be comprised of a significant amount of solids or bubbles, or the high frequency sound will be too weak to travel across the pipe. So there you have it. If you still have questions, feel free to give us a call or chat on Omega.com. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe.